I'm Sam Slam. I'm the senior VP of preclinical development at QPS, and uh, my training is in mass spec and carbohydrates and glycoproteins. So since graduate school, I keep thinking that would be fun to work on a gene level in drug discovery and development versus at the protein level or at the metabolites level. It really depends on the size and the complexity. So for the smaller oligos, the antisense, the um, sRNA and the aptamers and the microRNAs and the pegylated, we use LCMS, the triples, we use high res we use hybridization ELISA, we use hybridization LC fluorescence, and then we use LCUV. Now for the bigger uh, master mRNA and for the vectors, we use qPCR. It really is depending on the size. Um, it, the size and the oligo drives everything. So traditionally, people will be thinking that they use mass spec or they use hybridization ELISA of some kinds. And what we do is as the size get bigger, we go to qPCR. The real difficulty is there is not a lot of people that have been doing this for a long time. So there is really no exchange of knowledge in the working level, same as the protein area, same as the small molecule LCMS area. So essentially what that really means is there's a lot of trial and error. And when people talk about they worked on oligos, what they really meant most of the time is they work on multiple oligos of the same chemistry versus multiple oligos of different chemistry because the methodology is very different. And then depending on how the backbone is modified, depending on the tag that you use to go after the uh, therapeutic targets, the chemistry and the method again is different. So our first oligo that we did validated per FDA guidance was 2002 using LCMS triple quadruple. So it's been 17 years since then. And uh, what we have done differently by then to now is now we use a lot of high res for the small oigos. We progress onto the hybridization, ELISA, hybridization fluorescence, about 10 years ago. The guidance has changed. The requirement is different, but fundamentally, when you're looking at the smaller oligos, the guidance and the criteria are using for the small molecule guidance. You look at hybridizations and the uh, ELISA work, you're looking at the ELISA guidance. Now, the issue is this. Um, the ISR is pretty easy to deal with for your typical small and mid-sized oligo. When you go after the messenger MRA level, the guidance using ICH, and the ICH guidance do not specify IC, ISR. So what that really means is that there is a lot of unclarity when people say, do I need to do ISR or don't I need to do ISR? And when I do ISR, what does that really mean? So things has changed a lot uh, the last 17 years since we got into oligos area. My expectation is that oligos in five years it will be essentially like the protein of now because protein five years ago is like small molecule, a little bit different. So that view has been progressing. What that really means is now they are single patient therapy using oligos. Generally, oligo has been in the orphan area or the rare disease area. Currently, there is the first largest trial that is in a normal, non-orphan and non um, ultra rare and we believe in the future oligo will be much more common and as more biotech outlines and oligos to big companies knowledge will be passed along better and we'll be able to actually discuss oligo quantitation and metabolism a little bit cleaner